हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन सो दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट वीडियो फ्राम द बी आर एस फिजियोलॉजी लेक्चर सीरीज एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद चैप्टर वन दैट इज़ सेल फिजियोलॉजी सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट इट ओके सेल मेम रेंज सो वी ऑल नो दैट सेल मेम रेंज आर कम्पोज ऑफ अ लिपिड बायलेयर द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर इज एक्चुअली अ लिपिड बायलेयर and uh, the proteins are dispersed in this lipid bilayer and uh, the lipid bilayer is basically these are phospholipids that have a glycerol backbone which is hydrophilic water soluble head and two fatty acid tails which are hydrophobic water insoluble the hydrophobic tails they face each other and form a bilayer so that is what written in the brs physiology but uh, i want to show you a picture from guyton so you can easily understand what this lipid bilayer is actually the phospholipids they are uh, they are writing here that uh, the phospholipids have a glycerol backbone and they are talking about the head and tail so let's look in this diagram uh, the membrane is mainly composed of lipid bilayer of phospholipid molecules and here are the proteins which are dispersed in this lipid bilayer so if we look closely into this lipid bilayer that is composed of phospholipid molecules so you can appreciate that uh, the structure of this phospholipid like it it has a head here and these are two tails okay so now we see that what is the difference between this head and tail and this will help us understand how the different molecules can cross through the membrane so this phospholipid head it is polar or hydrophilic and why because it has the negatively charged phosphate group that makes this phospholipid head hydrophilic in nature and uh, these two tails these are uh, these are made up of fatty acids so these are non polar the tails are non polar or hydrophobic but the head it is hydrophilic uh, and uh, the hydrophobic portion of the phospholipid molecules are repelled by water but they are mutually attracted to one another and they have this tendency to attach in the middle of the membrane see the phospholipid uh, tails they are attracted to one another in the middle of the membrane and this head it is hydro it is hydrophilic the hydrophilic phosphate portion that constitute the two surfaces of the cell membrane in contact with intracellular water on the inside of membrane and extracellular water on the outside membrane so this is the basic structure of cell membrane okay so now we have uh, understood the basic structure of membrane uh, we have talked about the phospholipid molecule uh, the head is hydrophilic and the tails are hydrophobic so now we can easily tell that with substances can easily cross the membrane and uh, with substances require certain facilitating molecules uh, carriers uh, the water channels so the water soluble substances like uh, glucose water uh, sodium and chloride they are ions so they cannot cross through the membrane easily and uh, they require certain water fill channels pores or they may be transported by certain carriers uh, because this lipid bilayer is impermeable to these water soluble substances but on the other hand the uh, lipid soluble substances like oxygen carbon dioxide and steroid hormones they can cross the cell membrane because they can dissolve in this hydrophobic lipid bilayer okay so let's talk about the proteins that are embedded in this lipid bilayer so these are of two types the integral proteins and the peripheral proteins so the integral proteins are also known as the transmembrane protein because they span the cell membrane the entire cell membrane and uh, also they are anchored to and embedded in the membrane through the strong interactions the hydrophobic interactions and uh, examples include the ion channels transport proteins they may act as receptors and also the g proteins okay and uh, the second one we have the peripheral proteins 
So the peripheral proteins, they are only attached to the surface of the membrane. They do not span the entire length of the membrane. They are not embedded in the membrane. Also, they are not covalently bound to membrane components because they are loosely, loosely attached to the membrane by uh, weak interactions, uh, electrostatic interactions. Uh, and last topic, on the page number one, we have the intercellular connections. So these are of various types. We have the tie junctions, the adherent junctions, desmosomes, and the gap junctions. So here only two of them are discussed. So the tie junctions, the junctions are nothing but these are attachment between the epithelial cells through which the solutes can pass or it is uh, a pathway for the communication between the cells uh, like in the gap junctions. So the tie junctions also known as zona, zona la occludens. So these are the attachment between the cells, often epithelial cells, and these are of two types. They may be tight impermeable as in the renal distal tubule or they may be permeable leaky as in the renal proximal tubule and gallbladder so the lining of the GIT tract it has uh, the tie junctions which are leaky so the leaky are in the renal proximal tubule and gallbladder whereas the tie junctions are in the renal distal tubule so remember these two things and uh, the last one is the gap junctions gap junctions is also an attachment between the cells uh, but it permits the intercellular communication and one thing you have to remember is that it is um, a speciality or it is a particular feature of these myocardial cells and uh, we will discuss in the next videos that how these gap junctions will allow the permit or they, they allow the flow of current the action potential actually so uh, also it is written here that uh, they permit the current flow and electrical coupling between the myocardial cells. So gap junctions are present in the myocardial cells. Okay, that's it for today. And in the next video, we will, we will discuss about the different types of transport across the membrane. So like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.